This is the Tyler Morgan Show on Relentless Daring Media Network. Welcome to the Tyler Morgan Show. This is Tyler Morgan, not live on Twitch as I usually be. Um, right now, I'm getting ready to do a interview with my good friend John Androsic of Five for Five, and we're going to be talking uh, the disastrous pullout from Afghanistan last year and the things that have gone on since then. His work with Save Our Allies filming a music video in Ukraine during an act of war. So this is going to be a great interview. Love John. Love having him on here. He is always a great guest. Glad to have him. Cannot wait. But before I get into the interview with John, I got a couple minutes here. Let me talk to you about one of my favorite things besides the whiskey on the wall behind me. That would be coffee more specifically american pride roasters uh recently my wife got a very fancy water cooler for the house that you can run k cups in and she thought she'd be cute and she got me some death wish coffee and it's all right but it came with a little the little basket thing you put your own coffee grounds in and oh my gosh i have been running frederick douglas blend through that Again, I've said this before, and I mean it, one of my favorite blends. So check out aprcoffee.com. They have all kinds of great flavors there. In fact, I'm drinking APR coffee right now. So if you want to check it out, aprcoffee.com, historically great coffee. Hey, man. Hey, John. What's up, buddy? Oh, Another day. <laughs> I'm here. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm coming off of six weeks of dealing with a broken hand. So, Oh, no. Sorry to hear that. Uh, my last seven weeks have been horrible. Oh. In, in the same week, my house got hit by lightning and caught on fire. Jesus. Three days later, I fall and break my hand. <laughs> ah. And we've been living in a construction zone ever since. I'm sorry to hear that. It's all good. That's what insurance is for, right? That's true. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, John, th the last year that we, since we pulled out of Afghanistan, as has been demonstrated in your re-release for the video to blood on my hands, it has been absolute hell on the people of Afghanistan. And when you did that re-release, I mean, just the headlines alone, just heartbreaking. No, you're right. It, uh, you know, I, I was trying to think about what could I do to try to, you know, like, like many to refocus on Afghanistan. You know, it was terrible a month before the anniversary. It, it's terrible now a month after the anniversary, but, you know, anniversaries tend to have, an opportunity in windows and I was coordinating with Mike Waltz and some of the other veteran organizations, uh, Scott Mann, who has a new book out about task force pineapple to try to put a little bit of spotlight back on Afghanistan. Um, and for me, I thought, you know, instead of me pontificating, let me just pull headlines, just stating the facts about the women's rights decimation, the, uh, the hunting of our allies. And they weren't, uh, you know, from from right leaning outlets, you know, I yeah. quoted the, the New York Times, CNN. I wanted to, you know, to to take the politics out of it and just just kind of show that this 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 great stain has only continued and frankly, in some respects, growing. So it was not pleasant to make, but um, as you know, I think uh, there's some of us who still feel obligated to keep the promise, and and to do that, we have to keep the light shining on what is now listed as the country with the least freedom in the world by many organizations who rank those things. And that that's happened in one year. And, and sadly that's directly because of our decision. Right. And, and, and as much as, you know, I, we want to talk about the disaster. I think there has to be a huge light shined on, yeah, you know, all these people who've gone in after the fact. You know, you talked about Scott Mann, Operation Pineapple, uh, Nick Palmigiano, and Save Our Allies. Have you have you watched his uh, documentary Send Me yet? 
I was there when they debut it in Washington DC with Tim Kennedy. And uh, it was, as you know, it's, it's incredibly powerful. And, you know, Nick and Save Our Allies were the group that took me to Ukraine and, uh, and helped me film the Come One Man Save the World video with Ukrainian orchestra. And, and to be with them kind of in theater, watching them do their work and meet some of their folks on the ground. It's, it's been incredible. One of the, you know, in this terrible time, one of the highlights of my life to see the heroes doing that kind of work. And, you know, you know, Tyler, what they did in Afghanistan, rescuing 12,000 people in 10 days. Right. And when, you, you know, I was with Scott Mann this weekend at the Gary Sinise Foundation Gala and, and you know, kind of talking to him and, and these folks haven't given up, you know, Project Exodus Relief. We're still doing Zoom calls. You know, Nick sent me a picture the other day of of two Afghan allies that that they rescued. They're certainly few and far between, but these, you know, they have incredible tenacity <laughs> and commitment and they're not giving up. So in, in this kind of depressing subject, there is this one bright light of, of Americans, private Americans, just doing heroic work, not just in Afghanistan, Ukraine, but around the world. I'm working with Bonnie Carroll from TAPS, another incredible organization that many of your your listeners are probably familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, she just got back from Ukraine, uh, was there for a week. She was in Nipro, which just took a couple missiles the, the day after she left and killed some children. So, you know, you meet these folks, you know, walking the walk, and it inspires you to to try to do more as well. So, I'm glad you mentioned Nick and uh, and those guys. We, <laughs> and it's amazing in the in these dark situations and places. We tend to have you know I hate to say a good time, but we try to keep each other you know focused and light and and not wallow in the misery, but try to shine the light on those who deserve it. Right, and I will say because my first experience with Nick Palmagiano was his videos for Ranger Up, and if yeah. anyone has ever followed his videos they are so goofy and off kilter <laughs> that when you kind of forget that he was you know army paratrooper ranger tabbed just leader of men and that when you know so when this kicked off an entire different side that so many people never got to see came out and i think so many people uh really stepped forward where you know this wasn't what they ever expected to be doing yeah no i mean there was some light moments in ukraine uh between the very serious moments and you know i think those guys have been doing it so long they understand that you you can't always be um angry frustrated depressed or you won't be able to survive the mission there has you know that's why you know i'm not a soldier but you know the 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 banter that kind of keep the soldiers, you know, teasing each other. And there was a moment we had a, an hour or two in Ukraine and we went to a music store because I wanted to buy a guitar and actually perform blood in my hands in Ukraine. And we were looking for guitars and, and Nick said, all right, hey, I'm going to sit at the piano. And, and he goes, and again, he's a, he's not just a, you know, a hero, a, a soldier. Um, he's a producer. He's a director. He's an artistic guy. So we did this little video of him pretending to play the, play hundred years on the piano, you know, and I'm over there and, and, you know, all of a sudden it pops to me and, you know, he loves those goofy <laughs> TikTok things. Right. And, but it just keeps it light. And I also know that if any, if there's any issue, um, you know, uh, he can kill the guy that's trying to kill me. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. you know, so that's, that's, that's always nice too. And having Tim Kennedy around, you also have a certain comfort that if things go bad, you got some bad asses, you know, around you to, to take, take care of us, of we, of us weaklings. So yeah, that, they're amazing people and we're just got off the phone with some of our save our allies people we're we're trying to do a a big old concert for freedom in ukraine and afghanistan so we're still pushing on our side and and to do it with folks like that who really become your family it actually gives you more energy makes it easier to you know to to fight that fight right and that's why i think a lot of people kind of you know who aren't paying attention they they forget that you know all these connections that we have made over the last 20 years in Afghanistan and what, you know, individuals who go over and help in Ukraine, the connections they make, they forget that they're actual people, you know, outside of the politics of everything. Uh, Cause I mean, 
watching Send Me, it all started off because Chad Robichaux wanted to get, you know, his guy out. Yeah. And there's so many stories like that. Basically, all these NGOs, that's how it started. You know, whether it was Scott Mann or Mike Edwards or or Chad, um, you know, they had brothers at war over there. You know, maybe some of them saved their lives, whether they were soldiers, interpreters, they became um, family members, you know, uh, with with Afghans and, and were so close to them. So for them, it was very personal. And then it just grew into like, well, nobody else is doing this. Let's save as many people as we can. But there's all, always personal connection. And there still is. I literally get emails every week about, you know, you know, my person, this person's still stranded. This person's being hunted. And, you know, you still see heroic Afghan women parading in the in the street, you know, protesting the fact that girls can't still go back to school, you know, with the Taliban beating them, you know. So, you know, it's it's crazy to see the world right now. You know, Iran, the women of Iran, Ukraine, Afghanistan, and we could go on for, for 10 minutes about the oppression in the world. But you also see these heroes doing heroic things. And and uh, I think. I think we're also seeing, you know, some some future, uh, you know, Mandela's uh, standing up for their country uh, if they don't get killed in the process of doing so. Right. And that's something that a lot of people who have been on the ground for, like I said, I've done two tours in Afghanistan. And when you see the people standing up, I mean. When I was over there, the first tour, we were in Host Province, Sabari District. We we're really close to uh, uh, Zambar, which is where the Haqqani Network was bringing a ton of their IEDs in from Pakistan. And there were people there in the Afghan army. It was a paycheck. They didn't care. It was, a, it was an excuse to go walk around, smoke some hash, listen to music. Right. But we had a leader in who was partnered with our company commander and Afghanistan by God is his fight. He's going to win it. And he worked so hard to weed out those Afghans who didn't want to be there. I mean, we right. had, we had one soldier in a platoon attached to who would always go on mission with us. He was teaching himself English. So that way we go out, we would have our assigned interpreter and then if we split into multiple groups, you know, our lieutenant, he could have the interpreter and then the other group. Yeah. We want Tajiman. Tajiman, come on. You yeah. know, we, that way we would have an interpreter who spoke enough English to help us out. And, you know, we had inter one interpreter, his family started getting death threats when we first got there. And this is a guy, he was American educated and he could spot a Pakistani from a mile away. It was uncanny. He just, we'd be on patrol. Yeah, that guy, he's Pakistani. And you call him over. You're from Pakistan. What are you doing here? And just start giving him the third degree. Oh, wow. And I, I'm here for hospitals and surgery. Yep. And these are the kinds of people that we're trying to get out. And I think everyone seems to forget that. Yeah, again, you know, it's the nature of American media to be, you know, um, here and gone. And, it, it, you know, it worries me that, that so much of our attention is paid to such shallow, trivial mm -hmm. things. It's also something I understand that people don't really want to talk about because it's shameful. It just makes us feel ashamed of ourselves. And and when you have that, you don't want to talk about it. You kind of want it to just go away. So it's easy to push these things. You know, you see that even with Ukraine, you know, it was a big deal for a while. Now it's kind of there, kind of not, kind of there, kind of not. And some people support it. Some people don't support it. But we're very kind of fickle in this, this, you know, this there's a squirrel, you know, culture. Yeah. Um, but there's folks like you and, and the, especially the folks who were in Afghanistan who, who feel obligated to, to do it. And, you know, so many people have that story. You know, Elliot Ackerman also wrote just an amazing book on Afghanistan called The Fifth Act, where it really talks about, you know, the interpreter that was with his unit and, and that bond and, and um, his obligation to try to save him and his family. And, and you can understand that and there's thousands of tens of thousands of of veterans and afghan veterans who feel that way and you understand why there's so much angst and frustration and ptsd and uh with our afghan veterans who see no closure on this debacle and uh you know hopefully 
I, I, I'm told if 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 the House changes uh, from Democrat to Republican, that there will be hearings on Afghanistan, because I think it's important for to we recognize what we did. Uh, we're never going to fix it. It's 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 going to be terrible for generations there. You know, women are back to the 14th century. But I think if we don't at least admit what we we did, uh, we'll never be able to to look back and and when another situation comes, recognize our failure here. And so I think, and also for Afghan veterans, I think until there's some accountability, look to me, the worst thing a year later from this this anniversary is that with all that's happened, um, all the the misery, um, the the murders of our allies, the Taliban, the, the the human rights disaster, the starvation, not one general, not one member of the State Department, not one advisor. Who said uh, that the, you know the Taliban will take six months to to even come to Kabul has been fired or resigned? Right, and I think that's one the biggest tragedy of all of it is that we have leaders in the military and in the civilian branches of the executive that they feel that they are we as Americans we're not entitled to accountability from them. You know, yeah. you know, Mark Milley, you know, was it seven years ago, 2015? Yeah, China's not our enemy. And it, and his refusal to accept, you know, any responsibility for his advising as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs to President Biden on, is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? Or if he was giving similar good or bad advice to Donald Trump when Donald Trump was initiating this withdrawal so i mean where where is you know you know austin brown where is or lloyd austin where did i get austin brown from oh my yeah. god my brain yeah. my brain no work it's been a long yeah. day <laughs> yeah. i've only been up yeah. since 4 a.m so yeah. but um but yeah no. lloyd austin has hasn't given any accountability as a secretary of defense uh gina haspel the cia uh just everyone has failed and no one wants to admit, okay, here's where we went wrong because every, every operation I ever did in the military at the end of it, we did an after action review. We look at what happened, right. what was supposed to happen. Here's what we did. Right. But more importantly, here's where we need to improve. Here's what we did wrong. If, if there's a reason to hold people accountability for failures, this is where we go through it. But there has been none of that with any of this Afghan debacle. No, and that's exactly what needs to happen. I'm glad you put it that way. It's exactly an after action review. Um, again, not just to document what we did wrong to to um, to adjust our strategies, you know, in a similar situation going forward, but also to have closure for our Afghan veterans um, who are so angry. I think I think the fact that you're right that that not only are, are General Milley and General Austin not held accountable you know a lot of times they're still parroting what an extraordinary success right. you know which is so Aurelian or Orwellian that just blows your mind and that's dangerous Worst piece. and you know and I also think I often think of um and again I, I I know I know they both struggle with this a lot probably personally but at the end of the day your actions are your actions and I often wonder if, if General Milley was honest when he said that he told uh President Biden to not abandoned Bagram to leave a small force there. And and Joe Biden said, no, we're not going to do that. If he would have resigned or threatened to resign, if we may not be here. Uh, look, this whole action on Afghanistan was a political operation. Uh, the White House wanted to celebrate uh, on the 20th anniversary of 9-11 being out of Afghanistan. So it was a complete political operation from the day one. That's why they call it extraordinary success now. But I think they would have maybe recalculated if their main general was going to resign. They would not want that uh, th that optic uh, with this with this with this withdrawal. So who knows if he actually would have gone through with it? And similar with, with General Austin, um, if he would have said, "You know what? Um, your decision. I respect you. I can't be part of it. I'm out of here," like many generals did under President Trump, um, who were. Um, lauded for their courage to oh, yeah. resign. 
Jim um, Mattis resigned as Secretary of Defense right. because he because he did not agree with Trump's policies. And if that's the way the left said, that's that's how the right said. This is how you protest a president when you are a general, when you are a cabinet member. If you cannot, in good conscience, go along with those policy decisions, deuces, I'm out. Yeah, and the, and 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 I respect that, uh, and I respect the generals who resigned resigned under Trump, and that's why I think so many veterans. Again, Tyler, you're part of the community. The, many of them are more angry and upset and feel betrayed by Austin and Milley and the generals than President Biden. They expect presidents to be political, okay? But they expect their leaders that took the oath to honor that oath, and I think they feel they've been betrayed and. You know, to this day, there's been no accountability, and I don't think there will be until uh, there are hearings. So let's hope that happens. I think it needs to happen. Um, those guys are going to, you know, they'll get their retirement and their $100,000 keynotes and go off into that world soon enough. But I think uh, I think we owe it to the Afghans to hold the people responsible who caused this. And certainly it wasn't only this president. It was, if you read Elliot Ackerman's book, it really documents the mistakes every president made. Oh, yeah. but one president, one president decided to do it this way, and two generals uh, decided to echo his political narrative and uh, and go along with it. And sadly, history, um, well, can't forget that. <clears throat> Absolutely. And so I, I know we spent a lot of time on Afghanistan, and I, I when I saw you were doing the music video in Ukraine at that bombed out airport, I was just like. Wait, John, have you lost your damn mind? <laughs> You're not alone in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm I'm sure Mrs. Andrasik was none too pleased. It was a long talk. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but so what was it like on the ground in Afghanistan? You know, in a a more Western war torn country versus you know, like I experienced in Afghanistan. Yeah, I mean, going to Ukraine was surreal. Uh, just getting there was surreal. Um, took two days. I had Nick Palmashano on one side, Hollywood Hurt on the other. And, you know, um, and you really feel like taking the war out of context for, for a minute, you mm -hmm. really feel like you're going back in time because a lot of the trains, a lot of the countryside, um, it's like 1950, you know, they're, they're 1955. And then you start to see some of the, the blown up tanks and it's world war two. <laughs> so you right. feel this, this weird kind of journey through time. Um, but then you also, you know, you see the carnage, you see some evidence of the atrocities, you see the blown up buildings, which you see bridges that the Ukrainians blew up to, 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 to try to stop Putin's army from coming into Kiev. Um, you see some of that strategy, you see some of the roadblocks, some of the artillery, um, and then you just meet the people and you understand why here we are, geez, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten months later with them actually not only providing a stalemate, but taking some territory back. You just see the fortitude in the everyday Ukrainian, in this violin player, in this cello player, in this uh, conductor. And they have this kind of stoicism and, and fortitude that I've never seen in my life. Um, so you're inspired, you're angry, you're frustrated, um, but you're also doing this musical collaboration with these people and, and you feel blessed to be able to have that um, experience and ability to shine the spotlight there. So every single emotion you can imagine occurred in those five days, um, as well as exhaustion because you don't sleep because oh, yeah. you're waiting for the air raid and you have to run down, <laughs> you know, under the hotel and, you know, and and so yeah, it's, it's just this, you know, I, I've never been a soldier, as I said, so I can't speak to what it feels like to be in combat or whatever. But but being there, I, I certainly got a taste of what the Ukrainian people are living under every day and that weight and how that drains you. And I kept thinking, I got to leave. You know, they don't. Right. So it was an education for sure. Well, with, even with beyond the politics of Ukraine, just... Thank you for going there and shining light, not on Zelensky and all his collection of green T-shirts, not on the political <laughs> leaders of of Ukraine, but 
you know, doing that video with, you know, the orchestra of Ukrainians, it's just like, these are the people who have to live with this. I think, again, that brings that uh, humanitarian aspect that bringing the humanity of who was in the middle of this, you know, without, you know, finding videos that, you know, like the old lady telling the Russian soldier, plant, put these sunflower seeds in your pocket. That way, when you die, there'll be sunflowers grow out of it. <laughs> and it turns out it was a staged video. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you uh, the propaganda from that comes from both sides of it, but just seeing the people trying their best to live their lives in the middle of hell. I mean, thank you so very much for that, John. I, I know it's kind of a short conversation for us, and yeah, I've I've got to get off here and run. But again, thank you for taking the time to sit down with me. Uh, it means a lot. Always a pleasure. You know, heal up quickly. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll, my, my we'll finger keep... that's going to be crooked for the rest of my life. That's great. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep you in the loop, on our, our, the loop on our endeavors, and it's always a pleasure to chat. Oh, yeah, absolutely, John. Thanks so much for joining me. See you, buddy. Take care, All Tyler. Right. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. So there's John hanging out with me again. Just absolute great guy. Um, again, if you are joining me on Patreon, you probably got to listen to this before you saw it on YouTube, before you listen to it on the regular podcast. So again, thank you so very much for joining me on Patreon. Um, remember, if you are not a member of Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash Tyler Morgan Show. Sign up five bucks a month. That's all, minimum five bucks a month. Join me uh, again, get access to AMAs, which I haven't done one yet. So as soon as I get some people on there who want to do an AMA, you can ask me anything. It'll be fun. I'm sure there'll be lots of, wait, what's your favorite whiskey you got up on the shelf or down the floor since the other shelf said it was going to fall over? Stupid shelf. Um, again, thank you so very much for joining me on this little conversation with John Androsik. Um, Again, as he does stuff, he, he, love, he loves come on and talk because I have exactly zero clout. And the fact that John wants to come on and have a conversation with me says a lot about John. Not so much about me, about him. He's an awesome class act dude. Again, so John Dross, go check out uh, the music videos for Can Once Man Save the World and Blood on Your Hands, One Year Anniversary Edition. Like I said, check out those headlines that came out from left-wing news sources, right-wing news sources. It just really highlights how badly we failed leaving Afghanistan. So again, thank you so much for joining me. And as always, stay relentless. The Tyler Morgan Show is a relentless daring media production. The Tyler Morgan Show is supported by its listeners. To support the show, go to ko-fi.com slash Tyler Morgan Show to donate there or relentlessdaring.com and hit the donate button at the top of the page to set up your donation. All music used in the Tyler Morgan Show is used with permission from purpleplanet.com. Link in the show notes. 2 Timothy 1 7. <laughs>